Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, brand new, brand new, brand new. We say, hey, happy new year, everybody. Happy new year. Uh, what did he say? Podcast. Yeah, this is the prototype of the prototype of the prototype. We're literally, uh, we're going to figure this shit out as we go. So it might be tripods tipping over, but uh, <laughs> shout out to everybody here. We're coming at you live from RPT Studios, a.k.a. the Chingo Bling Network, a.k.a. Broadcasting all over your viejas nalgas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we coming in extra <laughs> spicy. They're like, yeah, chingo's rusty, dog. We coming in extra hot, man. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the What Did He Said podcast. Coming at you live from the RPT Studios. It's your boy Chingo Bling, uh, the homie from Corpus Christi. Drove in. What's up, Big Don? What up, man? Yeah, happy, thank you for joining ha- happy us. Happy New Year's. Happy New Year's with an S. You know what I'm saying? Years. Thank you for joining us. We also have Juan Perez. What's up, what's up? Comedian extraordinaire, a.k.a. Blue Blazer in full effect. You know what I'm full effect. Uh, we got sure DJ got producer interview. Big Rob. In DJ the background. Big in the Rob. background. That's why we need a fourth camera. So when we set up the Patreon, mm-hmm. we get everything going. We're going to need your uh, you know what I'm saying? economic participation. Go, go fund me for the producer camera. Yeah, if y'all want the, you know, if y'all want to see what Rob wearing back there. You want the beard and the shot or not? Okay. Yeah, come on it's, now. It's, it's majestic. Thank you. You, you, you know, uh, ladies of all generations appreciate Rob's Yellowstone beard. This is true. And, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a strong beard. That's got to be behind a paywall, man. That's yeah, right. No, no low testosterone over there. It's all tea. It's Puro the alpha. tea corner. Puro alpha in this house. If you would like to sponsor the tea corner, <laughs> uh, send us an email, marisol at chingobling.com. <laughs> Uh, tour dates, man. I have some tour dates coming up, thank goodness, because uh, shout out to my wife uh, and her apparel. Uh, her apparel been holding it down. You know, what I'm you know what I'm saying? Maintaining the household, making sure we got running water and electricity. Got that support <laughs> system. Uh, dude, last night the lights went out. I'm going to tell you about that. But first, January <laughs> January 25th, January 25th, I'll be in McAllen. It's a doubleheader event, man. Chingo Bling and Raymond Norta, the pinche synergy, the pinche tag team. Y'all had no idea that y'all were needing. January 25th, McAllen. January 26th, South Padre Island, also at Raymond Orta. And January 27th, we finished the run in Laredo, Texas. Get all your info, get your tickets, check the venues. It's all, uh, you know, it might be like at a, um, a quinceanera salon. Don't worry about that. You're going to pay full rate because it's still, you don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it, man. So hit it up, chingobling.com. Get your tickets now. And we'll get to Javi's tour dates in a minute, man. But uh, that way we don't bombard these motherfuckers with like, damn, bro. Yeah, first five minutes, put on short yeah. dates. Don't forget, chingo de churros. Uh, okay. you know, if y'all like, <laughs> y'all like coffee? Oh, let me tell you about how the lights went out before we get into current events and everything else. So last night was like a fire drill because my wife went home yet. You know, she was at the Hive, shop at the boutique. Make sure y'all go check out the boutique. And I had the little one, the one and a half year old, in the tub. Right? She's in the tub. Penny's downstairs watching TV. Lights go out. Das! You hear from downstairs, Daddy, stop playing a prank on me. Daddy, I know that. I know that's you. You play too much. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, uh, I don't have my flashlight by me, so I got to do it with my phone. But I don't want to drop it in the, in the waters. I'm trying to get the baby out. Mm-hmm. The, the, baby mm-hmm. da- the other baby down, the toddler, she's downstairs, like starting to freak out. Ha, ha, ha. All right, Daddy. Ha, ha. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Bro, I'm like, all right, I got to figure this out. So... I managed to get the one out the tub. I go get the flashlight. Now I help guide Penny up the stairs. Mom's not home yet. Now I got to go in the garage, get the other, like, the other flashlight, the batteries, the tourniquet. You know what I'm saying? In case some shit, you don't know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, yeah, by the time Mom showed up, I was just like, hey, um, I ain't got to actually do the generator and all that, right? Like, we just going to wait on the city. <laughs> like, don't have me out there. What's the estimate? On the, yeah, on good. the repair time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like you want to call, yeah. you want to call Reliant first. Why did why I, the power go out? You know, sh- Marisol thinks it has something to do with like somebody running into something because oh, she saw yeah. like the metro truck and this. I, we really don't know. Uh, our grid is kind of iffy. Come on, Houston. You know, the Texas grid is kind of iffy. Just be running Houston into, driver into poles and stuff all the time. Just. Yeah, I'm getting tired of Harris County. Y'all already know. <laughs> How do you face that uh, mic towards you a little bit? So we can hear you better. Yeah. Like point it. <laughs> like ang- yeah, angle, like that? I yeah. see. Get up on it, big dog. Get up on it. Eat that shit. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Hey, don't edit none of that out. <laughs> don't edit don't none know, of that out. That's strictly on the Patreon. <laughs> hey, pause. No homo. Uh, like, behind the paywall, though. This? Deep throat that microphone. Nobody you know said saying? I had to do this. Uh, hey, so real quick, man. Before <laughs> Only we... fans content. <laughs> yeah. Behind the paywall. 
So, uh, if everybody listens to our other podcast on RPT, is that where we, you and I, Rob, we discuss music? We did on the premium episode. Or was it cafecito time? But cafecito. we talk about both, music a both. lot. Yeah. And uh, make sure I go check those out. So, long story short, I was like, Rob, how do you not know Dr. Dre's The Chronic? Like, how, how are you not familiar oh. with, like, Prince's, like, Prince, the contribution? I was like, bro, Madonna was the shit. Lady Gaga was the broke man's version. She was trying to be avant-garde. I was like, yeah, you know, Papa Don't Preach was about abortion. She been tackling these issues <laughs> head on. And and I was like, dude, I showed him the Snoop Dogg, uh, like something from Doggy Style. Snoop Doggy Dogg. First 20 seconds in, he's like, this is already more Snoop Dogg that I've ever watched musically. Really? In my life. It's That's true, yeah. So is it just rap or, or like you're just... You're, no, because I love H-Town. Ra- no, definitely yeah. not. That's what Chingo said. Would you say a what? Single genre person. Oh. Like some people like... This is what I listen to. Yeah. This is all I listen to. No, I honestly was just it's never exposed to me. But I, but I want to get Javi's take on his music before y'all yeah, start yeah, yeah, roasting yeah. me because I didn't no, know shit about it. No, no, no. No, this is going to be like, then he, long story short, he gave me two albums to check out. I okay. gave him two albums and we'll get into that. Okay. Yeah, I thought I thought you were just saying he didn't know albums and I was, I was, I was going to go with you because I'm not a an album name person. Like People, uh, people okay. are like, oh yeah, that song was yeah. on this album and it was like, I'm like... No, nah, I like that song. Oh, I like, like that band. And I know who sings it, but like, I can't tell you what yeah. what album it came out on most of the time, unless it's like someone I'm really into. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. so long story short, man. Um, so obviously I had like it was a good reminder to me that people have they get exposed to different things, and there's that ten year age gap. Yeah. So I had to kind of remember like, like bro, uh, not everybody had the same exact fucking experience and exposure for sure meanwhile i was on the other side of the wall and you were like do you know what this song is about one and i was like i overheard you and i was like abortion <laughs> <laughs> you're like Man, yeah see he gets it i'm like son of sure a don't <laughs> hey hey juan be in the same boat because yesterday i was like yo i was like have you ever seen menace to society and juan's like yeah i was like dude I was like, I watched it again last night. Marisol and I saw the first 15, 20 minutes. And I was like, this is some Alfred Hitchcock shit. And Juan's like, he's just like, My- so did it hit the same? He's like, because I saw it with a chick not too, uh, like a while back. He's like, and she kept saying that this ain't funny. Turn it off. And I was like, bro, menace to society. He got confused. He, he thought I was talking about don't be a menace in the hood or don't be a menace while sipping your juice in the hood. But yeah, they did yeah. such a good job with that parody. Some, like, it is hard to separate the the... the actual men in society and don't drink your juice like in your head like people like get scenes mixed up all the time because it's like just, the mandela they did, did such yeah because they're like oh remember like yeah yeah that, when he shot was, the, the clerk he went like this <laughs> when he shot it. i, I gave like, the same answer juan i gave you the happen. same answer like a year ago when he asked me that that's what i was thinking of too yeah, yeah. so, well, so it, it, the funny thing is he was going in for 20 minutes with me and i was and he like, just kept like, was like is this he's yeah, like wayne's yeah. brothers so yeah and could you believe she didn't think it was funny if she had fucked up my whole experience he's just like it was. It wasn't. It wasn't funny. I was like, Cause, what? Because I was mean, going it through funny. it. I was like, bro, Sam Jackson in the mm-hmm. second scene. Sam Jackson is the dad. He fucking shoots the dude, the cane when he was a kid. He witnessed all this, mm-hmm. and then I was like, dude, Jada Pinkett was a new actress. She's on this in the scene, and mm-hmm. they, she's got a role. And and I was like, it was just like the the nineties and all this type. And of I'm shit. sitting there like, man, maybe my my I memory's mean, all fucked up because I don't remember none of that. I remember the leaves. Remember <laughs> the leaves were coming from nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't remember Jada. I don't remember Samuel. Yeah, Fuck. that's the actual menace to society. Everyone always remember, remembers, don't be a menace. Yeah. Uh, don't and, be uh, a menace to society. At one point, so Javi had a whole script idea, like a spoof of Blood and Blood Out, American Me and all that. And Selena. <laughs> oh, El, <laughs> El Movie. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of like, yeah, I had a La Movie? Called, called El Movie. <laughs> Uh, which, which which was gonna be basically what the Waynes did with Blood and Blood Out with with uh, Boys Boys in the Hood and and uh, Don't Be a Menace, but to do it with with the with the Chicano uh, hood movies, which, which was of course Blood and Blood Out and American Me, and then adding a little Stand Deliver. And so do y'all, do y'all like know? In there. Do y'all know why uh, Don't Be a Menace while sipping your juice in the hood? Like that spoof title, y'all know where they're drawing from. So there's a movie called Juice, mm-hmm. and that's another one of those like urban, you know, drama, you know, the plight of the black man. Was Tupac whatever. in that one too? Tupac was in that one. He was mm-hmm. not in, he wasn't in Boys in the Hood. Mm. You think about Ice Cube, you're getting your rappers and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, anyway, don't be a menace, menace to society while sipping your juice, juice in the hood, Boys in the Hood. Mm. So they're drawing, it's like saying like, 
don't play your La Bamba with your friend Selena while standing and delivering, you know, right. blood in and with your blood out. Or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen La Bamba either. That. No? No. Wow. A La Bamba? Okay. Yeah. Never seen it? Like, I'm not with you on that one. Have you, like, one. never seen it? Like, you've seen parts of it. I've, only what I've seen, like, in a clip. Because it's like it, it'll come it's back on around. TV a lot. I mean, I, get <laughs> I watch, watch TV. TV yeah. Or, yeah. Okay. Javi, you haven't yeah. seen Javi's set? Oh, well, that's true. <laughs> that's oh, the, that's right the right only there. reason why dude, I know it. He has the I fucking see. greatest reenact. I always run, <laughs> dude. I, I always run out the green room. I always run out the green room. First of all, <laughs> props, dude. Props to Javi, bro. Um, <laughs> what's his name? Ricky. Richie. Richie. My bad. Okay, so you know the artist Richie Valens, yes, right? Yes. 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 Oh, Donna, we belong together. <laughs> yes. You know what I'm saying? You're mine. Anyway. You know, six number one hits in only nine months. <laughs> oh, oh, that's shit. insane. Oh, facts. Spitting facts. That's insane. Yeah. Well, his career was so short, you know, which you don't really... Usually, in in when they do do biopics, right, they're trying to, like, truncate a whole long-ass career into a it's movie. It's like a summer. Like, so you're like, oh, was that, like, five years in between that? Like, but with him, when they, when they told that story in that movie... His career was seriously that years. short. A few years, right? Nine cool. months. Oh, he had a nine-month nine career. Nine months from his first... Like, came out the game with one. hits. Yeah. And nine months later, he was, he was dead. Wow. Which one was his yeah. first hit? O'Donna? Uh, Donna? Come on, let's go. Well, in fact, that was... Come on, let's go. Yeah. In fact, a little yeah. trivia for you. That was supposed to originally be the name of La Bamba. Was, mm, of the movie. Go. The movie was originally supposed to be called Come on, let's go. That would have sucked. And it, it, yeah, <laughs> and it, if you watch if you watch the movie, it's fun little drinking game. Watch La Bamba. Take a shot every time they say "Come on, let's go." Uh, it's said like over twenty times. Can like, we do that on the podcast yeah. as an episode? <laughs> sure, why not? Shots, Shots or sip or sips. Shots. Or sips. <laughs> I got to say, or hits or yeah, hits. It's like a recurring line in the movie. No, and, damn, that is some good. And then at the end, it wasn't till post production that the, watching they were like, you know, La Bamba's really a. A better fit. For so him. that's I had no idea. So yeah. a couple years ago, Rob had mentioned he had a he had seen a poster. You had a poster that said like classic cinema, cinema American like to do list. Mm-hmm. Like you gotta fucking watch this shit. And uh, I, dude, I'm glad I had like a film appreciation class in high school. This young teacher like showed us Space Odyssey 2001, like yeah. Alfred Hitchcock and all this stuff. And uh, at the time, it's just like, oh, this is a fucking slacker class. Like, we just sit in the dark, fucking watch movies. Same. I but, took, a, I took yeah. a similar class. Oh, okay, well. I took a literature and film class, and everyone else took it as a... Slacker. As a slacker class, and I was like, no, nah, I, I was working at a video store at that time. I oh, like, I wanna, man. I want to study all these, all these oh, films, man. That's amazing. And um, so now, when I was watching Menace to Society, I was like... This is some Alfred Hitchcock type shit. The, the way the scenes and the lighting and the tension is obviously it's from a different time period. But I was like, I wanted to do a deep dive and be like, what were the Hughes brothers um, f- cinema influences mm-hmm. in terms of like what type of sh- gangster movie? Because they even show like a lot of old timey gangster movies within mm-hmm. Menace to Society. So mm-hmm. it might be like the parents watching something or the kids seeing there's something on the TV like subtle um, Anyway, Mighty Soul and I were watching Men's Society, and I was like, bro, the intro scene is so fucking classic. And I was like, those two Asian uh, storekeepers, I was like, they sold that scene. They're just like, hurry up and buy. You know, like, I feel sorry for your mother. What you say about my mom? Give me the security tape. He only had $6 and kicked him again. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> and then this following scene after that is, is him as a kid, the protagonist as a kid, mm-hmm. Sam Jackson as his dad. And it's a it's a gambling dice game thing going on. His mom's on heroin. It's like basically Kendrick Lamar s- borrowed that whole fucking aesthetic and made his whole career off that scene, basically. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Sam Jackson like put on the Chingo calls out Kendrick <laughs> yeah, Lamar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clickbait, clickbait, <laughs> clickbait. Uh, <laughs> but but then to see Sam Jackson play the same guy over and over again throughout his whole career, he's like. Where's my money, motherfucker? And, you know, he's like, suck my dish. He shoots him a bunch of times. I was like, this is the second scene in. I was like, I've seen this movie plenty of times. Then the third scene is when his cousin gets shot in the fucking street after they're mm-hmm. pumping gas. And he's fucking twitching on the floor. And then the Muslim dude, which they spoofed on uh, Don't Be a Menace. He's yeah. like, it ain't right, all right. Sharif, come on. It ain't right, all right. <laughs> I was like, bro, this is the first three scenes out yeah. the gate. There's death, fucking but they, but, death. But that's what they need to do to paint that picture of 
okay, this is a very violent world these people are mm-hmm. living in. Shakespeare, and bro. yet And yet they're having to go through just normal life stuff. And then also I might get shot at any point. And also Jada Pinkett's throwing me to... You know what I'm saying? She she flirting, so you know I might I'm have saying? to do that. You know what I'm saying? But 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 her dude's my homie, and he's yeah. locked up. Right That's the now. Big, that was actually his big homie, like Pernell. Yeah, yeah. That was his big homie. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> it's a, dude, it's fucking Shakespeare, bro. It is. But uh, but anyway, it was nice to do that little memory lane. But back to these albums. So I gave Rob some homework assignment. Yeah, I told him to check out. He he said, "Give me some albums between what ninety yeah. to ninety three. Yeah, mm. that track, was a little track difficult. One side one. I wanted to give him yeah, that much. was no. Nah, I gave him. Um, it was tricky because I was like, okay, now nah, DMC. Nah, they weren't. <laughs> they didn't drop some shit that year. <laughs> he got it. He got <laughs> I got it. it. Got go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> so so, I said, all right, Nas Ilmatic. I was like, check out Nas Ilmatic, and then I was gonna also be like, oh shit, uh, Tribe Called Quest. Mm. But then I'm like, wait, that's too too East Coast. I was like, ah. So then I was like, keep scrolling. We did a Google search of what dropped that time. And I gave him the first Outkast album, which mm-hmm. probably isn't even their best album. But just so he can at least say, yeah, I have checked out their first fucking album, bitch. And if he says, I don't like them, then he at least... And I'm, it was uh, a so, certain playlist of Cadillac music. Yes. Okay, I, that, mm, I like that one more than I like Nas. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Just the, the delivery, the sound. Like Even though it was the same time, it sounds like completely different worlds. I mean, I don't know if it's Atlanta versus New York or yeah, what it is, that, but that's always the context is always yeah. like who produced it. Mm-hmm. There's way more tracks I, I liked on Outkast. Interesting. I I didn't yeah. think that was gonna be what, your answer. Oh, uh, what was the documentary that uh, that Ice T narrated the hip hop? Oh yeah, I saw that at Sundance. That uh, I forget I forget what it was uh, called. That's a that's a good one if you're if you're looking because I missed a lot of that too. Mm. I'm 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 with you there because I was an oldies kid. Growing mm. up, like I, I like Richie Valens and all that stuff. That's what I was listening to as a kid, and then it wasn't until I got to like high school that I started to venture into of contemporary music. Well, I mean, the stuff I would hear around, <laughs> right? Whatever my parents, you're you're always exposed to whatever your parents listen. Cleaning to. the house, yeah. I got a little bit of rap because of my brother. I got a little bit of R and B and stuff because of my cousins. But if I was in my room. I'm I'm listening to Golden Oldies. I'm li- listening to Richie Valens. I'm listening to Elvis Presley, you know, so, stuff like Damn, that. Was, I, I didn't start getting into like country and stuff like that until I was already like almost yeah, out of high because it's like an ocean. Yeah. So like yeah. for for instance, I was familiar with like obviously Metallica. Like I like because he assigned me Metallica Live from Mexico City, such a great album, and Pantera okay. Cowboys, uh, from, Cowboys Hell. from Hell. Yeah. And I actually listened to the deluxe version, which had live cuts. Okay. I don't know if you're familiar with so that. He got that extra credit. Either. Yeah, he did. He did. Well, it was a pleasant surprise because, like, I was familiar with heavy metal. Like, I was still grew up in the 80s, and you got older siblings and all that shit. Like, you're growing up in America, like, you you know the shit, right? You're at least somewhat familiar. I, I knew how big Metallica was. I knew they were global and every, stadiums and all that shit. So I listened to their uh, the live from Mexico City. That was like a cool experience. Just seeing, like, hearing them. I pictured like it's a little orchestra symphony with just a different texture of sound. Like that's the level of musician these motherfuckers are with their instruments, right? And um, and the fact that it was live, I was like, damn, these dudes are putting on a show. Like. I can't even see what they're doing. It's like, Mexico City, you know? And then the first song, is that theirs? The uh, the Modelo song? Something for a gold? Um, da, da, uh, 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 I can't remember which one's the first one on the album now. It's, um... Uh, While well, he's looking that up, Javi, what's your favorite, what's your favorite, like, artist of all time, if you had to say? Oh, man. Because based on, because you used to play the guitar on your Instagram pretty often. Yeah, yeah, uh... So I know you've got a palette, like a wide palette of music. I do, music. I, and, and, and I take pride in that. Like, I do like a little bit of everything. Like, I can enjoy almost anything. Um, it's tough, man, because I, I, like oh, right. I like a lot of lyricists. Like, like, like definitely Ray Wiley is one, one of, to me, one, one of the best just storytellers. Oh, I gotta and, check that out. And, and, and he's very poetic in, in the way he writes. He actually started out as a poet and then picked up music. And I, I like a lot of guys like that. Uh, the same reason I like a lot of early John Mayer and, yeah. and, and the, his his style of, of songwriting. So I gravitate towards songwriters, storytellers, anything that's kind of a little folky. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like bluegrass. Um, I would have to say overall, probably now looking back, I'd probably say Bob Marley. Mm. Uh, you, you know, just and that's something someone that I didn't really start to like 
actually study like what what he was doing until I was already an adult, you know. But yeah, Bob Marley never would have guessed. Uh, you you yeah. fuck with Bob Marley? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> See, yeah, I, yeah. That's that was my initial perception. Like that's why I had a fucking like cognitive dissonance of like I just assume everybody thought Michael Jackson was dope, Prince uh-huh. was dope, Madonna was dope, or pop pop outside of like the golden age of rock and roll right when when rock and roll was pop you know which which is right up until the point where you you, you go into like the beatles and then everything becomes this like compl- when pop becomes just this synthesized music yeah um oh yeah I, it's I, I too kind of, popular I'm, it I'm just depends on the artist but but like just yeah where you can't even tell or like for when, that, there's no guitar when when get when the guitar riff exited pop music right you know, which you rarely hear now, and if it is, it's incredibly simplistic. Yeah, you know, same four chords. Right, right. Yeah, you know, you know, I, I kind of checked out. Oh. Yeah. See, Javi has an appreciation and, for rock. yeah, but like for example, like hearing Rob say, like to me, it's like you've been missing out on Bob Marley. So that's why instantly I have this shock of like Bob Marley. Eh. It's like, have you tried it? It's almost like it's a food. Like, yeah, have you tried uh, Bob Marley? People associate it, you know, with. Whatever weed, weed culture and all that, but I mean, he he, he wrote wrote some beautiful, you know. Oh, it's uh, great. Songs. It's on, great. On, on, on Is it like a go to album for for Bob? Just listen to the hits. I would say. Yeah, yeah. Again, steer it album. up. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, no, no woman, no cry. To me, yeah, is, no is one no of the most, you know. Uh, it's it's just a it's a beautiful no, song, woman, you know, no and of course, and you know, one love and all the all the hits, you know, just the hits, bro. Just peep the hits. Yes. All right, I'll peep the hits. Been missing out, yeah, Rob. You've been, been missing out. out. Damn. Hey, man, you're not off limits here either. Juan don't even I, know an artist's I, name. It's less an album. I'm, I'm surface level with Some music. Some people don't, man. It, it, aren't into like like I'm a nerd when I don't have enough shit. room in yeah, my brain see, for I'm it. Not, so it's like saying, I mean, what I know is I have to really like it to be able to tell you, like I said, an album, like even over. Could I name them out? If 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 you really pressed me for it, I would I could dig somewhere and like oh yeah the, you know yeah. Other than that, it's just I know what songs of his I like you know put on a playlist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind, I might not know like oh that was live from '86 and which kind whatever. of I tried to start collecting a little bit of vinyl uh, these past few years because that kind of forces you right because I grew up primarily CD age you know and, and then even. Towards the end of my like high school career, MP3 players started to come out, and I feel like right as soon as that happens, the 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 concept of an album kind of died a little bit, right? Especially now, people I feel like people don't even really focus on the album, which is oh, this is this is a, everything is a single mm. now. Wait, Let's put it out. You? We record it, put it out. How old are you? I'm 39. 39? Mm. Yeah. Okay, so we we're on the same. So yeah. So so I missed a lot of that. You know, I got to experience going to Craig's Record Factory or FYE or whatever and go pick up a CD. But by the time I actually really had the money to like, oh, I'm going to invest in music, you know, and, and start purchasing music. It was, you know, it was Napster. and Lime Oh, Wire. you're right. Yeah. I was all in because, I mean, I, so, I I was always a nerd about the shit. That's why the assignment of yeah. like, all right, Rob assigned me to it was such a fun exercise right so i I was checking out the metallica live just appreciating like damn who mixed this shit and did they write all their own stuff and and damn who's the dude on drums right or whatever right yeah so i'm checking it out and i i was jamming it while running errands so you hear like a song or two you hop out the car an hour later you hear another song like that and we were gonna meet up like today so i'm like shit i gotta hurt and start getting on my pantera homework (laughs) so when i first popped in the album I was like, all right, okay, already, it's slightly different. Uh, and I already knew, I knew they were from Texas. I knew they weren't, like, as big as Metallic or anything like that. And Rob had gave me a little cheat sheet. He's like, oh, one of the greatest gu- guitar players, whatever. So I'm checking it out, and I was just like, I had these expectations. So at first, I'm kind of like, huh, where's, uh, it's not, where's the catchy melody? Like, where's the, I want to hear the chord progression, like okay and i'm just like all right well it's got a cool texture don't 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 you know the fun because every time i had a uh, a rehearsal studio to either like rehearse with a band at a time or sometimes certain music people like in austin they might have a production studio in a big warehouse with individual rooms so you hear down the hall and you're like sharing the break room and stuff with these fucking don't 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 and you just hear it through the walls and you're like okay it's cool so by the time I got to the Pantera part where it was like the live shit, 
by then it was like pantera are we falling in love like, is that, <laughs> yeah. can i say i love you yet pantera <laughs> I was like, where the fuck you been i was like holy shit because some of the stuff was so like clean even though it was fast yeah like like fucking yeah. i was like oh shit like when you're rolling in jujitsu <laughs> play that 100 percent. yeah and um it, it sounds like them drums stirred something in you it did yeah, it, it, yeah it, Vinny it, paul one yeah, of the best yeah, drummers I mean, ever I mean, and of course the, the drum being like the the first instrument right right the, the, sets the beat okay, sets the whole it, yeah it does, yeah yeah i definitely get, i get i'm not into metal i couldn't i you know other than like the big names like i couldn't tell you any metal bands but i i get the appeal to why it like it just gets the totally, blood pumping. totally. It, it, it and, and it's a lot that 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 and, base and that, you know just triggers something in, instinctual and, and primal bro you. primal there first you go. of all bro mm-hmm. like i was like who mixed this live i was like first of all y'all sound better live i was like <laughs> what the fuck number two it's even though it was so fast they were in it had a swing to it mm-hmm. and they were uh, super in the pocket still i'm like what the oh, like it was one of those where like bro you could have filmed my reaction and it would have been where i'm like pause i told Tingo to do that like people do on on youtube like like rapper reacts to metal or metal or you know reacts to, to rap oh, yeah like pe- people hear bob molly for the first time same you know? yeah i could, I could do <laughs> yeah. that yeah yeah no i'm i'm definitely a, a firm believer in i've heard the quote uh, attributed to two people and 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 i could believe both of them saying it with frank zappa and john coltrane which is there's only two types of, of music right good music and bad music <laughs> and to me metal is one of those genres where it when it's played well it's it's awesome yeah but it's also one of those genres that's very easily done bad and when it's bad it's fucking but that's what it's bad. when you get a bunch of people who don't know their craft yeah, or, or, or whatever, and it's all over, and it's really just a bunch of noise. That, that's what I think a lot of people when they say talk about like metal, you hear them say, "Oh, it's just a bunch of noise." Yeah, you can't right, right. It's, it's, yeah. Well, you're you're hearing bad metal, right? If you're, if you're listening to <laughs> yeah. it done well, you, you, you know. Yeah, it's an it's, art. A, it's almost like you, you gotta respect what it is. It's almost like you have to like train your ears to know how to listen to metal, just like with hip hop. Like if you're gonna listen to Nas. Like, I don't know, like, what'd you think about the samples and the beats? They were very similar. And, drums. and what I started to appreciate was that I would, I heard, like, I heard Logic in some of Nas's stuff. You know, I heard uh, Logic the rapper, and I heard, it, like, more of the modern people, like, oh, I see, all, I see how many times this sound was sampled throughout my, like, high school years and, and beyond, right? And then New York State of Mind, and then I forgot what the last one is. Uh, those are probably my two favorite on that Elmatic album. What'd you like on Outcast one? Uh, dude, they were all pretty good. Like, oh shit, Andre 3000s. Del- I mean, cause you got to think too. Like, when did Outkast drop their last album? Like late '90s, early 2000s. Like, Outkast has been a name. No, not late '90s. It had to be in the 2000s. It was early 2000s because that because I reviewed it for like, my college paper. Oh no shit, because uh, it, it, it was a double album. Oh, the Love uh, Below Speaker, speaker Box. box. Level, it was like oh, oh, 05, below. right? Yeah, it had to be like 05. Oh, oh, 04 or oh, five somewhere. Around I think there. it was oh, 05. And okay, they, yeah. they've evolved so much yeah. that you at least got to sit down and listen to their first. When they were just nobodies from Atlanta, like that, uh, that helped shape a lot. And then the production team behind um, those first three, right? Which is uh, the the Atlantic, what's Southern it? Playlist, uh, Cadillac yeah, Music. Yeah, I know. ATL, ATL, and then uh, Stankonia was Stankonia. After that. Yeah. I forgot where I heard the story. I know I'm going back to Metallica, but whenever they first came on the scene, they like overshadowed the band they opened for, right? It was something like that. Y'all never heard of that? I think it was Saxon. Well, right? that's happened a lot. I just don't know. They just no, but like the first time they were just like, yeah, you could open for us. It's like the opening band, and they were just like, oh shit, we gotta follow that shit. <laughs> it's just like comedy, right? And, like, and they just went back up like, oh yeah, oh, they just ate it just because they yeah, had. There's, like, there's been stories about that. Uh, Steve Ray, Steve Ray Vaughn was actually supposed to. He he was David Bowie's guitarist for a minute, and went and went to the Montreal, uh, not Montreal. Uh, <laughs> Some pops festival. I forget. Can't. Can't. It's not mine. I'm mistaking Montreal. You but, think a comedy? Yeah, comedy yeah, festival. Yeah, comedy festival. But uh, City? goes up and 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 fucking blow up and go and plays before fucking Bowie and just fucking wow oh, annihilates. <laughs> like, are you familiar with? Because I was in a San Diego, Texas flood, but I was like, nah, it's not really the. It wasn't the same time period, I guess, kind of for what we're talking about. But were you like a like a Stevie Ray Vaughan kind of fan, like of that kind of Texas artist? Man, I'm just not familiar. I haven't just sat down and really. Mm-hmm. Okay, not just yeah. curious. 
yeah, yeah. What were you going to say? Oh, no, I was going to say... Um, Texas Flood's a great album to start with. Yeah. It's okay. What, it's, what's a use, different time period? Well, it's just the, the blue. It was like blues. Like We weren't really talking about like blues. Texas blues rocks. So yeah, it's we're, we're way different than metal. It, yeah. Okay, I got to check that out for sure. sure. We'll, we'll, we'll do another week if you Fuck have time. Fuck yeah, yeah. I'm surprised you had time because I know he was up on all the podcasts too. Like, man, you heard the new this and the new Rogan. I'm like, when do you have time to listen to the homework? <laughs> do you listen to music while you're doing stuff? Oh, yeah. Or do you, or do you sit down and... I try to listen. do both, but I find that if I can... Like, for instance, when I was listening to Nas, I was editing... Uh, I was getting stuff ready for the podcast. Like, so I was lining up shows and clips to get ready to go. So I'd pause the music and start on the audio. If the music stops for me what I'm doing, then I'm like, oh, this is really good. Like, the sound's really good, or the lyrics on, like, New York State of Mind were really good. I just stopped what I was doing, and I started listening. Okay. But if I listened to the album all the way through, I only caught, like, two or three songs that did that. So I listened to it again in the car, and I was like, okay, I did miss a couple of little gems in here, but it didn't, like, stop me from what I was doing. It's crazy because, like, that 10-track album is considered, like, one of the greatest fucking hip-hop albums. But it's all subjective. Yeah. Right? Because, um, I mean, I had a hard time picking what I was going to sign you because... To me, I was like, fuck. I was later when, because you sent me to Metallica Live, and I was like, bro, he might need to check out Jay Z's live album he did for MTV. Hmm. Well, he wore that stupid ass Che Guevara shirt. But anyway, <laughs> um, but I was like, damn, that's a really good live album. He had the roots back him. Oh. Yeah. But oh, this is what I want to say. Javi always has the best fucking walk into the stage music. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. Yeah, no, serious. It's always because it, see, with me, it's always like Jerry Garcia saying like, "Ah, oh, come on, Chingo, you got to come out to your shit. Like, it's part of the experience. That's what the fans expect." Yada yada. I'm like, all right, all right, fuck it then, man. Then, you know that Kanye in Chicago, man. That shit was gonna get me in the right mood, man. You know, he, you know, he from here, right? <laughs> or whatever, right? You know, I gotta come out to that yay. You know, you know, in good life. But then how you have him fucking getting ready with that? Uh, which is that one that um, like war. Oh, yeah. Or Cisco Kids. That's Cisco War too. Kid, Cisco, Cisco Kid. Kid. How he's walking out there with his bandana. Wild a friend of mine. I haven't <laughs> seen that one. I haven't seen you come out of yeah, that one yet. I think it's more... Because a lot of people... See, there's two ways for me looking at the walk-up song. right? People say, oh, this is how I want people... But for me, it's more like... It's for you. What? Yeah, what, yeah. what's going to put me in, in the mindset like a fighter. that I need to be in? This ain't for y'all, yeah. man. It's for me. Yeah, yeah, it really is. I mean, if y'all are vibing to it, great. But, but yeah, it's really... Uh, I'm gonna have fun. Yeah, I hope y'all did well, too. <laughs> I, well, well, for, well, for comedy, I feel like if you are That's having how fun, it is, yeah. the audience yeah. is gonna have yeah, fun, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, if you ain't having fun, you're not doing it right. I think Javi's got to put us on some of those uh, the early music he likes because I'm surprised also that you you took to the Pantera like you did. Holy shit! I mean, I, I want to digest it because there's a lot to kind of unpack. But just from the initial, I was like, yo, these live tracks mm. and just the fucking the musicality of where like, first of all, I don't know how they're able to do their voice like that all the time. Yeah. Like even when homeboy's talking to the crowd, like, yeah, yeah. and I was like, God damn, <laughs> I can't even do a skit like that. My shit starts, I start coughing. My, my mama motivations on Monday and shit. <laughs> Raza. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. can edit that word, right, one. Yeah. You can edit that one. You got that one. Right, one. <laughs> you got you got that one? All right, edit that word. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, do you have a? So I, I kind of want some homework now from Javi real quick before we get into some current events. We yeah, got about event. fifteen minutes left on this episode. Uh, okay. What's an artist like? An artist that you say like someone's got to experience. Like Jingo said, Nas, Illmatic. Like what's the? You got to listen to this from your time. From my time. That you yeah that you enjoyed. Music oh, wise, or you want to give them the time span of what is it, ninety to 90 90, 93. Like early nineties, I feel like across the board had some of the best music. What grade were you in though? I wasn't. I was like four. No, I was born eighty nine. Ninety to ninety three. I mean, I was eight to ten <laughs> years old. So, I, so, so <laughs> I wasn't. Uh, uh, I would have to say the first album <laughs> that I wanted was uh, was Green Day's Dookie album. Oh, when I was great album! Grade. Yeah, great, yeah, yeah. That was a fr- probably one of the first. Like and it was a cassette oh, that wow. I bought. Like, oh, it came out. I'm gonna go get it. Oh wow! Maybe the question should be like from your high school years, only because I feel like I assigned Nas Elmatic to a four year old. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like I almost feel like, damn, bro, you were four, and I just told you listen to. Fucking but I love music, and you said that this was like it's. What did you say? It's iconic, right? It's iconic. I want to listen to iconic shit. I had okay. horrible taste in music in in, in high school. <laughs> Uh, horrible. I mean, I because I just listened to whatever was on 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 like a 
top 40 rated. So I'm talking about like some 41 and like Sugar Ray. Oh, that's funny. It, 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 so like stuff that high school kids listen to. Why at, are you at gay? Crappy, <laughs> at crappy, are at you crappy gay? parties, you know. But then like towards the end, I started to get into like Dave Matthews Band, Weezer. Yeah. Uh, stuff. Hey, Fat Lip went hard. Yeah. Some 41 had a couple of bangers. Yeah, yeah, it was all right. It was all right. You know, like, stuff. sir, don't call them bangers. Uh, <laughs> they were bops. They were bops. Okay. Yeah, it's for a, sure. And I, and I still, you, you know, sometimes, you know, my wife and I will be hanging out, whatever, sipping some wine, and I'll throw on, like, the, like, just trash 90s, you know, some Matchbox 20, you know, and we'll just go down that, that rabbit hole of like, oh, remember this one? Oh, man. Are we yeah. really doing this? Are we doing Fuck it. We do it all the time. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah. We, that, yeah. we like to do that. Third Eye Blind and shit. That's one thing I appreciate yeah. about Mighty Soul and I is like, we kind of came up around the same time. So like, we get all the same shit, like same like we're sitting there watching the Menace Society, and she's remembering the scene, doesn't it? Yeah, mm-hmm. they were both repulsed with Rob when when they found out he did. Dude, when I said I, I think Madonna's <laughs> trash, they both almost <laughs> lost it. I mean, she was iconic for for for, for the right. time. I mean, my soul was just like, yeah, yeah. I was fortunate yeah, enough. A lot of people think I'm sometimes <laughs> older than I am because my brother is like almost ten years older than me. He's Same, like nine years older than me. So even though I was literally a baby in the 80s mm-hmm. i got exposed to a lot of 80s stuff through him just because yeah same here he had it around like ice tea ice tea was already acting by the time i was truly aware like who he was say i grew up with ice tea would be yeah understand but i remember my brother having cop killer um, you know well, bla- blasting while he's getting even, ready for school even before first of all we backed police nah. <laughs> uh, uh, even like um well speaking of ice t well he plays a cop now so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's true <laughs> nothing but uh, anyway speaking of, like speaking no. of ice t like the movie colors that was first when i was like the theme one of the main rap songs it was i'm a nightmare walking oh, psychopath psych. talking any problem my guy i just put my fist in or whatever whatever and it's fucking ice t his rap song and and then he was he actually played a cop, a, uh-huh. a undercover cop on uh, New Jack City. Mm-hmm. So by then I was already up on game. But uh, I, one of my favorite songs of his when I was a little kid was uh, Six in the Morning Police at My Door, Fresh Adidas Squeak Across the Bathroom." You know what I mean? It was like the cruising down the street in my six. It was like the same. It's like who bit who type of thing. Six in the morning, police at my like the same type of um, oh, damn. Yeah. storytelling. So I, I, I mean, when I was say watching Colors, which is not a kid appropriate movie, when I say I got to see that when it came out because of, because of my brother, my mom hated hated that. By the way, I remember my brother went and got that cassette when it came out, the soundtrack, and was blasting that color that din, 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 yeah. and, and that comes on, and my mom, it's a, it was a funny. Story. Just a story we laugh at about my mom to this day. She couldn't tell what it was saying. <laughs> old people always do that. I can't, you can't even tell what it was saying. She, she's yelling at my bro- my brother's playing it in the truck right on the way to school, and she's like, "Turn that off." What is it? And the song says, "Colors, colors." Yes. But she heard it as crud, which was offensive crud. to her. For some reason. She goes, "What do they keep saying? Crud, <laughs> crud, <laughs> crud." <laughs> That's crazy. Turn that off. Some racist shit. Saying crud. crud. Over and over again. Yeah. That's yeah. Oh, so when I met Maria Conchita Alonso, who was in Colors, well, yeah. so when I met her, all I could think of was like, you was one in that scene with Pac-Man. Yeah, and Pac-Man. And, yeah, well, Pac-Man was beating it up, and now you're here. What do you and do, Pac-Man? It's like, ah, uh, Maria Conchita. <laughs> I'm a huge uh, fan. Uh, <laughs> huge fan of your work. Yeah, huge fan of your, <laughs> huge fan of your work. <laughs> All right, current events, man. What we got going? On? What do we have going on today? Anybody? Well, Anybody before we going? do that, uh, who, what do we got going on, Javi? Show wise, what do you got going on? Uh, so I will be in uh, what, what's it? Bass Trap, Texas, on the twenty seventh of of January. Sorry, I didn't know, know when this is coming out. And then <laughs> I'll also be um, in Corpus Christi, my hometown, at Mesquite Street Comedy Club downtown on the 11th of February and also on val- actually on Valentine's Day. So you can, you can bring you can bring the side chick to yeah. one and the main to the nice. other one. You can do both, whichever, and and it, 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 we're going to hit them, hit them both. Because some people like to go out on Valentine's Day, but we're also going to hit the, week- the weekenders, get out of the way. 
That's great. Hey, that's a hell of a uh, date idea. It's, yeah. it's nothing like a good comedy Come show. Date night, man. Get out of the like. The Monday, the, the fucking you know, movie, movie and a dinner. And, and the good thing is, the comedians do all the work for you, so they, you know, they're boom. gonna be in a good mood. They're gonna be laughing. The Smiling. Laughing is an aphrodisiac, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Giggling. Yeah, gig- yeah. Gig- giggling. Y'all giggling and stuff. Y'all giggly. You know what I'm saying? Just don't get out of hand because Holly will roast you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> all right, don't embarrass you in front of your chick. That's gonna be the worst thing. That, I don't want to sit up front. Well, don't say shit. Don't say shit. I ain't yeah. not Just be good. Say shit. Don't start no shit. Won't be no yeah, shit. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. I'm not gonna roast you just because you wore a shirt that I don't like. I don't. I don't do that. <laughs> like, oh, look at this guy. Look at this guy. Where'd you get this shirt from? Huh? 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 Where's this huh? guy's shop? Huh? Douchebags are right? us. Yeah. Huh? Does your Does your wife know you're a douchebag? How long have you been a douchebag? <laughs> <laughs> On Valentine's Day. Yeah. God, talk. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> That'd be the worst. Javi, how's the comedy scene right now down there where you are? Like, I saw Marlon. I think who's coming in town? One of the Wayne's brothers. Popping, man. So, so. Comedy in Corpus has finally reached a point where it's I can actually call it a, a scene because it, it, it prior to that it's kind of just been like one person booking a room or, or or one club operating. Now we have you know multiple. There's there's levels to the shit. Actually, we got an active open mic scene. We got a bunch of open micers putting on their little showcases and shows at different bars and venues and coffee houses and stuff. And then you have we have a, a room that's booking a lot of regional acts to come down and and, and you know do 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 a show inside a restaurant and uh, and then we have Mesquite Street which, which which does the same thing with regional acts but they also opened up uh, just back in 21 I believe um, their south side location which which is like a three four hundred seat something venue don't quote me on the numbers but it's huge it's an old movie theater that they turned into a comedy club. So it's very now similar to like the size of what an improv would be, which are, are improvs are classified as comedy theaters. So now we can bring big acts. So so have big acts there. Like I got to open for Eddie Griffin there. Previously, there was no space there for for people to go to Corpus. You know, it, it was kind of, we'd missed out on a lot of acts because because. We have a theater, two thousand seat theater, mm. but if you can't sell two thousand seats, <clears throat> where and but you'd have to do too many shows inside of a hundred fifty seat venue, you're not going to come to Corpus. So no one would come anywhere south of San Antonio. So we're getting a lot of acts now, come coming through. We had Rob Schneider, like I said, Marlon Wayne's is is, is coming, uh, the end of the end of the month sometime. Uh, yeah, Texas is uh, on the map, Big Dot. You know, we got Rogan and them up there in Austin. Oh yeah, that's a whole different. LA moved to Austin. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. little, scene, little Nashville uh, comedy scene wise, man. Yeah, and that's uh, you know what? When I got to visit Tom Segura Studios with Danny Brown, pretty much the entire staff all moved there to Austin from from LA. Mm-hmm. Pretty much, so it's like none of y'all local. It's, like none of y'all could be like, hey, let's go to you know the, on the, the south. The side. funny part is, years ago when we, were, we when we did uh, Oxnard. Uh, I stayed over an extra day and I did. I stayed in L.A. I did. I did a, the mic at the comedy store. I did potluck, and then I got on uh, Tony Hinchcliffe's podcast, Kill Tony, and uh, I went up first. And you know they only give you one minute, but I did pretty good for 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 the minute. So typically, what they do on there is they roast you, uh, at, but I didn't really give them anything to roast me on other than my size, you know. So they spent the most of their time with me t- telling me, you know. Oh, why did I still live in Texas? Why didn't I, if I'm so good, why didn't yeah. I move out to L.A.? And yada, yada. The hilarious part is four years later, They're all, moving. all those guys have moved now Fuck to yeah. Texas. So. <laughs> Chico's been saying it forever. Motherfucking yeah. right. So next, I'm going to give you a UGK album. <laughs> oh, so you, you see the power of Texas. No, you live in Houston. I know you listen. You, you, yeah, you for, of course. But uh, you talk about extra credit. Juan mentioned when uh, Chewing got to the Pantera Life stuff. I actually, when I was looking for uh, Nas and then I went to the Outcast, Wu Tang came up for whatever reason, as like I suggested. Mm-hmm. So I did dive into a little bit of Wu Tang, but we'll save that for another episode. Did you do That's the fun. first album, 36 Chambers? Wu-Tang, that was the one that Wu-Tang was suggested. Those, you got to listen to the album. Right? Oh, yeah. That in its entirety, sure. right? Yeah. Right, right. That's what I hear. Yeah, for sure. So the, I'll. I'll I'll will serve myself that one as a homework on your own. Okay, well shit. Well, if you wanna if you wanna make that your next album, hey, what happened to Dr. Dre the Chronic? Why is it not on iTunes and Spotify? And neither is Doggy Style by Snoop Dogg. Uh, something with I the knew, master. I knew, I knew this answer because because it, it came up 
not not that long ago, and and yeah, it's something with something with the, the something, master and yeah, the, the, something mm. licensing. Well, unfortunately, yeah. it might be hard to find. So maybe do uh, oh shucks, maybe do a tribe called Quest their um their first album. I just hate to give you number East Coast. Yeah, it's all you number did. New York people. Yeah, was there nobody on? Well, let me see. For a specific time period. I mean, obviously, like. I mean, obviously, Too Short, E-40. I mean, there's a lot of people on the West. I mean, again, Dre, N.W.A., uh, Dr. Dre, The Chronic, that was like a big album. Snoop Dogg, Doggy Style was a big album. All right. Mm -hmm. Uh, I got like, let's let's do one before we do our 45, wrap up our 45 minutes here. Uh, Do you guys remember, this is just trending, which is why I'm bringing it up. Uh, The guy that played Chandler's dad on Friends, the trans character, Eddie Izzard? I don't remember who. No, I don't know who the. Actually, Eddie Izzard's like full trans now, huh? Is he? Yeah. Yeah. I, I haven't followed him in years, but that's a. He chopped it. I think so. I mean, somebody had read an article. Remember, the, he's a comedian, right? He's a he's a yeah, full time comedian. comedian, like who would dress up as a woman, yeah, right, say, yeah, on stage. Yeah. But now is like full trans. Supposedly. Oh, does he sound the same? I haven't I haven't heard or seen anything. It's just somebody was reading a, a headline about it. We're speculating it. a lot. Totally. Yeah, 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 I think he did chop it off. Yeah, I think he chemically I mean, castrated I've seen himself. Friends, but no, I don't remember. I can't picture. Did it just no. fall off? <laughs> well, the, they said that even though they didn't regret the role, they probably wouldn't play the trans role on Friends today. Oh. Kathleen Turner was that artist. Kathleen Turner. Huh. Oh, okay. So it was a, it was an actual female. Yeah, it was, but she had actors. very like dude, you know. <gasps> oh, she energy. played a trans dude. Yeah, she played Chandler's Chick. dad, who was like a trans Vegas oh, cross dresser. Oh, I was thinking the other so way. So she played a man who dressed up as a woman, yes. but she's just a woman with manly oh. features. Yes, yes, yes. And she regrets it because that's taken away I, from a trans person. Look, yeah, 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 go ahead. Yeah. So I, she, I'm thinking I know who it is. She's regretting it because she doesn't want to take jobs away from actual trans people. Well, she didn't really say why. She oh, said based off the climate of like today's world, she wouldn't redo, redo that role, which is a very popular role. Like that's a really famous role from the late '90s. And she got paid. But in a way, by she doesn't stand by it, or in a way, like I, I just don't want any backlash. Like, or because she doesn't think it's right for an actual. Because she's a biological right yeah. female, right? Probably female that's to, to cis, cis cisgender. Like cis. you should actually. Play. Yeah, but back then, back, but back then everybody was thirsty for a role, though. Like, no, I'm saying, but yeah. she's saying now today yeah. she she thinks. Is it because she thinks that role should be played by an actual trans? Maybe she's person? virtue signaling. She's just saying that. <laughs> yeah, but if you read that headlines check. now, yeah, trying to get headlines. It's like, but how, how much you gonna pay me though? Just <laughs> no, before I say, well, that. I'm actually I mean, trans I mean, friend, now, friend, so give me a different a hot, role. Was a hot show back in the day. I don't know a lot of people do what to what to say. Yeah, no. yeah, I know. You, you sure you yeah. want to say no to friends? Do I know that? exactly. Well, it depends. When did she come into the? When people did she actually get in onto friends? Like, was it the first season? It was early on. It was like... Oh, it was early? Well, so, yeah. she was one she of the main character's know. mother. It was probably would have been a recurring... Yeah, role. she was super recurring. No, I know, but like, it depends so. on like if it was already big and then yeah. she got on, she, yeah, they were going to write her a check. But if yeah. it was like first starting out... Like, it was 01 is when she was on the show. Season. The show was at a huge... Well, she she wasn't like a character. She would have been like a, a guest star. Yeah. She, she did... She was a, yeah. a known actress at that point. Right. So. I'm sure. I'm sure she got residuals and all. she wasn't like walking in with like scale. Yeah, I'm sure. So I'm sure. Even if it wasn't a big show, I'm sure she still got. She got that paper. Uh, one more in entertainment, just because we've been talking about this episode. Yeah. Did you guys ever see Zoolander? Yes. Oh. It, was it good? I always hear that it was like an, it's an underrated movie. It's fun. It was. It's it, all right. It, Juan said yes. Like he's excited. It's funny. You like well, the over actor? No, genres? it's just it's just because it was funny. Like it, there was just a lot of like different things that like uh, like. You know how movies back then used to have like catchphrases and stuff when you mm-hmm. leave the damn that's what that one was. Yeah. It was a little too silly. They said they might for, make a third one for me. For fans. Yeah. I mean, I get it. It's, I'm not saying it's not funny, but like to to be like like the whole like this spraying the gasoline and so it's like <laughs> <laughs> all right. but, I mean, okay. they're making TikToks about them now. And not only that, but the the the, the computer thing, the files are in no, exactly. Like, no, those there was are good stupid. humor yeah. with, with with within there, right? And, yeah. And the whole there's nuggets. There's nuggets. Where Overall, the you had to be there. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That's like like the Big Lebowski. I tried to show my wife. I was like, man, it's one of my favorite movies, and and she's like, okay, well, I couldn't find it, so I put up like out of context scenes jump cut together mm. from like a YouTube thing, yeah. and and it just missed the mark, and it's just one of those like I'm just like if you if you if you just sit and you just really watch it, she's just mm. like. Oh. Okay. Now she'll never watch it. <laughs> and she's like, don't be a menace. Just, 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 <laughs> let's watch just, that. Just watch don't be a menace. I love the Big Lebowski. No, no, not don't be a menace to, just menace to society. 
Right. No, but I'm saying that's, <laughs> what, that's what I was saying. That's why they ended up watching that. Correct him, Javi. Correct him. Hey, man. I love the way. Are we still confused on the difference between Menace to Society and Don't, don't Be a Menace? Don't Be a Menace is the comedy. Is the spoof. Menace to Society is, is the drama. <laughs> you got it? No, I still haven't seen the other one, so uh, I don't okay. No, I don't got it. I still got the one in my head. <laughs> All right. Let her. All right, y'all. We'll talk more cinema, more music. Until next time, uh, don't forget, man, website. They can check out your tickets and where you're going to be. Uh, we- website is Universal Comedy. Uh, all social media is Javi Luna Comedy, so you can find me on there. Luna Versal Comedy. Yeah. Like Luna, y'all. Luna I like that. Javi Luna Versal Comedy. Yeah, Universal yeah. Comedy. Yeah. Javi about that life. That's a good com. website. Yes, sir. Yeah. It'll be in yeah. the description in the show notes below. And chingoblin.com for all my chucherias and fucking the digital pulga. And we will see you on the road in a city near you. Happy New Year. Sass.